Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the chair and ranking member for holding this important hearing. Uh, I'm going to state the obvious. To improve the so-called green supply chain, you first need to fix the actual supply chain. The former cannot exist without the latter, obviously. And this supply chain crisis didn't come out of nowhere. This was a self-inflicted wound, a direct result of bad progressive policies, from mandates to overregulation, attacks on American energy. They've compounded every single problem we're facing today, from record high inflation to slow economic growth to shrinking labor force participation and potentially an energy crisis. Policies have consequences. Locking down businesses, though shown to have little impact on the trends of the pandemic, had a huge impact on employment, economic growth, and yes, supply change. A year later, we're still dealing with that. Vaccine mandates threaten to scare off employees in every industry from logistics to ports to shipping. The head of the National Association of Wholesale Distributors put it this way, thousands of valued employees will be forced out of their jobs shortly before the holidays. The already compromised supply chain will be under added pressure during the busiest time of the year, and the already tight labor market will make it immeasurably more difficult to replace laid off employees, compounding supply chain disruption, end quote. In California, where the bottleneck Bottleneck at our busiest port is exacerbating this crisis. Their version of the PRO Act, which Democrats passed out of the House this year and which bans independent contracting, threatens to destroy the trucking industry. Most truckers are freelance owner operators, which California outlawed by banning independent contracting. Truckers sued California, but if they lose, their industry will be decimated in the midst of this supply chain crisis. It also seems as if President Biden is doing everything in his power to make energy less affordable and harder to come by. On day one, President Biden shut down the Keystone Pipeline, of course, while also asking OPEC to increase their production. The Democrat Party seems intent on nationalizing the failed energy policies of California, where the price of electricity has risen six times faster than the rest of the country. The attack on oil and gas has put a chilling effect on investments in new production to the benefit of global competitors like Russia. These policies impact the poorest Americans the worst. As energy prices rise, more Americans sink into poverty. Every 10% increase in energy costs leads to 840,000 Americans falling below the poverty line. And now, instead of holding a hearing to examine how we can fix the supply chain crisis, deal with skyrocketing energy costs and unprecedented inflation, we're here to talk about the clean energy supply chain. And this, this strikes me as a, a bit of a joke, a joke because in response to the worst supply chain crisis in our lifetime, the president has offered an executive order to move clean energy manufacturing back to the United States. Now, here's the problem. Every single component in wind turbines and solar panels and electric vehicle batteries is made with the raw materials that Democrats say are destroying the planet. So which is it? Seems to me that when Democrats say they will create green jobs, they apparently mean green jobs in China because they'll never allow the rare earth mining and refining and processing necessary to make those things here. Wind turbines are made with 75% steel, which is as its most basic iron core plus carbon. They're made with resin, which comes from natural gas. They're coated in chemicals like PFAS. But Democrats have made mining so politically toxic that we now only have seven remaining iron ore mines in the United States, despite having three billion tons of iron ore in the United States. Democrats have turned natural gas into the enemy, threatening to tax it out of existence in the reconciliation bill, even though natural gas is the single largest reason for carbon emission reductions in the United States. Solar panels and batteries require critical minerals, but Democrats, even in the Build Back Better Act, impose staggering royalties on both new and existing hard rock mineral projects, despite the fact that these minerals are crucial to the Biden administration's own clean energy goals. Even if we could build all of these new renewable power sources, we would need vast amounts of transmission lines and therefore copper to transport it. In fact, experts estimate copper demand will double by 2040, but guess what? Democrat reconciliation bill specifically shuts down the Resolution Copper Project in Arizona, which could supply up to 25% of domestic copper demand and provide almost 4,000 jobs. And can we please stop pretending that we can meet the demand for rare earths by recycling more? The testimony, testimony presented here today has already debunked that false narrative, showing only a fraction of our needs could ever be met by recycling. Not to mention separating and recycling rare earth metals takes enormous amounts of heat, something impossible to, to produce with renewable energy. So my point is this, policies have consequences and progressive policies are hurting Americans. We can fix this by giving businesses some breathing room, calling off the attacks on American energy and rescinding unconstitutional vaccine mandates. But instead we hear about the fantasy of green supply chains that can never be built, ironically, because of the barriers put in place by progressive policies. Thank you and I yield back.